Welcome back. Probably the dumbest thing we've seen from a politician this week was a tweet issued by Steve Gibbons this morning labelling Tony Abbott a gutless douchebag and Julie Bishop a narcissistic bimbo. Obviously the recent sexism debate is something that didn't have a huge impact on Mr Gibbons but he did see the error of his ways. First deciding to fix things by replacing the word bimbo with fool then deleting the tweets altogether and apologising unreservedly. The Prime Minister has expressed her disapproval to Mr Gibbons but we get to see a public statement from the Prime Minister about the matter despite the opposition's calls for her to step in. These comments are completely inappropriate and they are offensive. The Coalition today is calling on the Prime Minister of Australia to publicly condemn the comments of her member and to take appropriate action. Let's go to our panel now. Joining me, the Labor MP, Graham Parrott, and the Liberal MP, Alan Tudge. Hello to both of you. Thanks for joining Gosh. us on the Gosh. program. Gosh. Graham Parrott, do you believe the Prime Minister should come out in public, in public, call Mr Gibbons on this and say he did something wrong, this is sexist, well, she, um, like she's promised to? She has certainly let Mr Gibbons know that the, uh, the tweet was offensive, you know, tweet press release, whatever you want to call it, because that's effectively what you're doing. Uh, and every right-thinking member of this House, all 225 other MPs and senators would, would agree with that. Thankfully, I know Steve's a bigger man than that, and he immediately, uh, once his, uh, the error of his ways were pointed out, he apologised unreservedly, and as, as, as he should have done. We know that the Coalition today is calling for Mr Gibbons to be dumped from his position as Deputy Chair on a committee. Is that really a precedent the Coalition wants to be set here? Well, let me just say this. It was a disgraceful tweet which he put out, and particularly in the context of the, the sexist wars, if you like, which we have going on at the moment. And my real concern is this is not an isolated instance. We had Mark Dreyfus previously who called someone a bitch in the Parliament. We've had um, a CFMEU dinner where half of the front bench were laughing at uh, inappropriate jokes to do with uh, Tony Abbott's female chief of staff. And we've had other instances from um, front bench members. This is the culture of the abuse and sexism which actually exists with, inside the ALP at the moment. They're quick to um, uh, accuse us of being X, Y and Z, but I think they need to look internally and fix up their own culture. The shameful thing about this is that you could both probably sit here all afternoon and give us examples of people on both sides being well, sexist, through, which, is, through the yeah, which is exactly the problem no, 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 you know, but, that but, we but, have in but, the first but place. The Prime Minister started this and said that she would not put up with so-called sexist comments. Now, it's her standard. She needs to deal with it now. She needs to make a categorical statement by removing him from his position. Graham, should Mr Gibbons be forced to stand out from this position of well, deputy chair, which that, does bring with it that, a higher salary and all for, of that? That's a call for Mr Gibbons and, and the Prime Minister, it's, and it's not something I'm going to comment on, certainly. Uh, uh, as someone that's been guilty of saying the odd rash thing in the past, you know, that normally in society, if you do the wrong thing and apologise, that is one of the consequences. I don't think Steve Gibbons, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a public statement that he has made, uh, an offensive public statement that everyone has agreed from you know, the, the first chance anyone in the Labor Party had. We have, we have made that very clear. We're not condoning it in any way. Uh, in terms of the consequences for, for, for that comment, you know, I think if Alan's going to start drawing that bow, there's a pretty long list of it's offensive comments standard, that have come the my Prime way. Uh, that have come said. my way. Well, and let's, let's go back to that, Alan. You're saying standard, that, that so the Prime Minister set that standard. that standard. I was in the Parliament. So should he resign from this chair position or not? Well, You're according not to the that. Prime Minister's own standards, he should be. Right. OK, let's move on. I, uh, there's a lot more to talk about. Julie Bishop has been pursuing the AWU slash fund saga in Parliament over the last couple of days. Yesterday, she asked every single question for the opposition in question time. She held two doorstops going through all of these allegations. This morning, she's been lying low, very quiet. All we've heard from Julie Bishop today is actually a statement. Um, this is after we saw her acknowledged yesterday that she met with Ralph Blewett, the AWU bag man, former AWU bag man. She had a meeting with him last Friday. Reports in the newspapers today suggested that she also did speak to him last Wednesday. Now, immediately, Labor came out and said, well, Julie uh, Bishop has been misleading the press on this issue. She's been lying. 
The statement that you can see on your screen clarifies these reports today. It says that she did have a phone call last Wednesday, but she didn't know who it was with. It was an anonymous call. She didn't realise who she was speaking with. She doesn't know if it was Ralph, Ralph Blewett or not. But as I say, regardless of this statement, we have seen Labor seize on this. Craig Emerson, the Trade Minister, held a doorstop just a short time ago here in Parliament to address this issue head on. Have a listen. Mrs Bishop, who has sought to conceal the fact that she'd had more than one conversation by, again, cre creating a ruse to suggest that she did have a conversation with Mr Blewett earlier in the week, but didn't know that she was talking to Mr Blewett. What? She talked to Mr Smith and then thought that she was talking to the waiter? Alan Touch, it all sounds a bit cloak and dagger. These anonymous phone calls, she doesn't know who it's from. Surely she could have figured that out. Uh, to, to be honest, this is a great distraction from the central issue here. And the central issue here is one of the biggest frauds conducted in Australian Union history, which concerned in the middle of the 1990s, where the Prime Minister was intricately involved with the players concerned. And the Prime Minister hasn't come clean and said categorically what she has done. She hasn't said why she didn't open up a file. She can't categorically say why she, uh, whether or not she wrote a letter to the Western Australian authorities confirming the appropriateness of this so-called slush fund. We've had Bill Shorten come out and said this slush, slush fund was completely inappropriate and unauthorised. The Prime Minister needs to come clean on these. In fact, what she should do is even instigate a review if she is so convinced um, that there's been no wrongdoing is on her part. Is this a case, though, of the coalition overreaching? Even in your statement there, saying this is one of the biggest frauds to be committed in Australian history. I mean, You need to read really. it more, more widely, Alan. Well, maybe there's been greater union frauds that have occurred that I'm aware of, but hundreds of thousands of dollars went missing here, and the Prime Minister seems to show no remorse in relation to this. There's been no effort by Paul Howard the AWU leader to try to reclaim his money. No one knows where the money has gone um, 15 or, or so years after the event. I mean, let's get to the bottom of this. And the Prime Minister was involved at the time. So were many other front benches. Let's have a full inquiry and get to the bottom of it. Graham Perrett, if the Prime Minister is happy to stand in front of the press gallery and explain her answers to these sorts of questions that Mr Tudge just brought up, why won't she go through it again in the Parliament? What are you guys smoking? I haven't you been watching Parliament the last two days and the last few weeks? The Prime Minister answers every one of these questions. The, the reality is... You know that's you, not you true. Keep, Alan, you keep, talking, true, you keep fair, talking about a smoking a gun. I mean, my conference. kid's empty Nerf gun is more like a smoking gun than this. The reality is the Prime Minister did what a, a normal lawyer would do. Uh, as a lawyer, I set up lots of companies. I set up, I'd set never set up unincorporated associations. But it's a normal process. What happens in that entity is not under the control of the, the Prime Minister as the lawyer. And she also has a duty, uh, you know, there's legal professional privilege in terms of dealing with mm. her client. Now, the reality is some fraud occurred with the funds. Now, the people that should be pursuing that, that, uh, those funds are the people who put the money into the fund in the first place. They have said, we're not pursuing that at all. Now, that, that's, uh, that's another matter in a way. I mean, it's sort of like the company fishing fund has been misused by somebody, oh. and then suddenly the person that set it up, uh, the, like the lawyer that's that set it up... That's a ridiculous the... analogy, Graham. Isn't it that was called the, the Australian... The AWU yeah, but, well, fund. If, if I call it the that's Woolies Fishing, the Woolies but fishing Club Society... isn't a distinction here, Alan Tudge, that Julia Gillard as the lawyer didn't actually set this up herself, and she keeps telling us she had no evidence at the time that this fund was going to be used to pilfer union members money, that she had no way to be aware of that at the, at the time. Isn't that what it really boils down to? Well, there was to? more evidence this morning to suggest that Slater and Gorton, in fact, was made aware of the fact that, that funds were being pilfered. And one of the central questions is, why didn't she make the AWU aware of the fact that funds were being pilfered at the particular time? Why didn't she notify the police the funds were being pilfered at the time? There's all sorts of questions which have not been answered directly in this parliament. She answered many any questions to your point, Graeme, um, to the press gallery? But that is very different to answering them in Parliament. Because in Parliament, no, there right. is a greater it's, burden. It's Bishop says in Parliament, the there no is relevance. a greater burden, Graeme, where you can be held for contempt if you mislead it. And if the Prime Minister is so sure of her word, then answer the questions directly, plainly in the Parliament. Clearly, the opposition is going to pursue this again in question time in about five minutes' time. How do you think the Prime Minister should handle this, Graham, in well, terms uh, of. As she has, every 
question that is pu has put to her. She has pr provided a direct answer, as far as I'm concerned. And look, and, and, as a solicitor, a question time well, to as, me, as a solicitor, I, I have set up lots of corporations. Every article, Any clerk, slush funds? Uh, well, perhaps. Perhaps. Mm. Well, as in a slush fund set up for a specific purpose. Remember that you've well, got to remember the, the, what it was. This was set it up was for, for workplace the reform. Well, it was set up for workplace yeah, reform. Alan, and it's you know, alleged that she wrote you know, to the Alan, Western Australian okay, Authority so suggesting you know that it was set up for the re-election part. We are going to be treating our viewers to a lot more debate on this coming up in Question Time, which is no doubt going to be dominated by this issue again, it seems. Before we go, though, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, speaking of Julia Gillard, we, have, of course, have been told that she was rolled in the Cabinet over this issue of Palestinian membership uh, to the UN vote that is coming up shortly. Is this a sign that her leadership is in a weak position at the moment? No, a, a good party, a big church like the Labor Party needs healthy debates and a range of ideas. Anyone that knows, that understands Middle Eastern history or the history of Israel and Palestine knows that there's a range of views and they, those views have legitimacy Competing ideas is a good thing for any party. The reality is we've come up with a, a, a view now and that's the way we're going to pro process. Certainly a lot of people in my electorate would prefer that we actually voted for, mm. for the recognition, but that's, that's the way the, the Labor Party comes up with a decision. It's not a good look, though, that you've got Cabinet Ministers clearly briefing journalists saying that the Prime Minister's I'm not been sitting enrolled. at that Cabinet table, so uh, no, uh, obviously not. I would prefer that, it, prefer that every Cabinet Minister kept their mouth closed. Considering this is such a controversial issue, giving uh, Palestinian mm. membership at the United Nations, isn't this the right way to go, to abstain instead of having a call on it, when we know this is something that does divide the Australian community? Well, this is actually for the first time and we've had uh, the bipartisanship on Israel smashed. Um, the Prime Minister was right in the first instance um, to not uh, rec recognise the Palestinian Authority, if you like, because Hamas is still a mil militant organisation and it has been consistently firing rockets into the suburbs of Israel. And by doing this, recognising it, it just rewards um, Hamas for their activities. More importantly, though, the Prime Minister was rolled on this. Let's, let's not mince words. She was rolled in her Cabinet. She was rolled by her caucus and she has lost authority as a result. I mean, the Prime Minister thought that she was going to be going to Christmas with wind in her back, and now she's going to be looking around, watching out for the knives in her back well, from her fellow Labor members. Well, many people didn't think she'd even last till Christmas, That's so right. she's uh, at least going to do that. It seems only, what, another uh, day of Parliament say, left. There are 4,000 clocks in this building. I think the only one that they're ticking for are uh, Alan's leader. He'd be, <laughs> he'd be hearing And that is a whole other debate we don't have time to get into right now. <laughs> Very quickly, though, before we go, I mentioned at the start of the show, this speech today by the Prime, uh, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, Peter O'Neill. Yep. Not a single federal MP turned up to listen to the Prime Minister of yep. our closest neighbour give this speech today. Does that strike you as strange? Where was Bob Carr? Where was Richard Miles? Well, I can speak for where I was and certainly I, I wasn't aware of the, the, the function. Now, uh, maybe the event came through and I'd already pre-booked. I'm certainly a strong supporter of uh, what we need to do in Papua New Guinea. One of our, our well, obviously, our very closest neighbour. I think mm -hmm. they're only seven kilometres from Queensland. So we know we've got lots to do with uh, Papua New Guinea and Queensland, so if the opportunity had been there, I would have loved to have been there. Mm, apparently Bob Carr's office and Richard Miles's office have said they didn't receive an actual invitation to go yeah. to this event. Alan Taj, did it strike you as strange? Julie Bishop was meant to go. She was a, a last-minute cancellation, apparently. I, 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 to be honest, I wouldn't read too much into this, Ash. I mean, we have a very strong relationship with Papua New Guinea. Um, I wasn't aware of the event going on. Yes, it would have been preferable for some of the front benches from both sides um, to be there, but let's not read too much into it. Okay, Alan Tudge and Graham Parrott, we appreciate you joining us on this lunchtime agenda on the final sitting week. Thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Plenty more politics, of course, coming up for you this afternoon.